Welcome back. You got Danita with Booty Bands More Than Fitness. And today we're going to learn about the five morning rituals to win the day. And welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. Get your best booty and abs in 30 days with your own coach and home gym. Results or your money back. Studies show that 80% of women gain the weight back within 12 months, and this is because the weight loss industry is just focusing on that one-size-fits-all solution rather than something that's more specific for just you. So not anymore because up here at BootyBands.com, you're going to get your own coach, a women's home gym, and the highest quality nutrition that's going to create those lasting results. So let's get started. So we have an awesome guest today. Her name is Shanice Benson. She's a fitness and lifestyle coach. And for three years, she's been an owner of her own business, which is called Bloom Fitness Academy. I've known Shanice from the very beginning of when I started my business as well. And we've been able to connect back and forth ever since about four or five years ago, we've been able to really go, hey, let's help each other in each other's businesses. Thank you so much, Janita, for having me. I'm very excited um, to basically be a part of the podcast because you've been doing such an amazing work and helping so many different people around the world, you know, just get fit. And I'm just excited to be here today. Yay. I'm excited for you here too. I know that there's going to be some really good content, you guys. So if you're listening, make sure to grab your journal. Cause again, this is going to be five morning rituals to win the day. So Shanice, tell us where this five morning rituals came from and why you created it. So basically this came from, um, Tony Robbins and a little bit of a few people that I already follow, like, um, Marie Forleo, um, Brandon Bouchard. So I just combined a lot of the people that inspires me and basically just saw what works, what doesn't work for me, because not everything is for everyone. Um, and I just needed to master my morning routine because my schedule was always so crazy and busy. And so this is where I decided, okay, I have to take charge of my morning. I have to take take charge of my my whole day and it starts with the morning for sure so what happened before this that you thought i need a morning ritual okay so basically i worked a corporate job while um running my uh coaching business and a lot of times i would just wake up and just like hope that i have a good day you know and hope that i'm going to be in a good mood because i'm a positive person but and that didn't always happen. We're not, we're human beings. We're not going to always be positive. We're not going to always be in the best mood and be motivated to take on the day. So with me traveling and then also traveling for my corporate job, which was higher education, and then also running my coaching business, I knew I had to set things in place so I can get the most out of my day. And that is physically and mentally. Yeah, I love it. I think a lot of us can relate to that waking up and going, okay, how can I be positive, especially all those mothers that are out there. I, I, God bless those mothers that are out there that are also business and entrepreneurs. I'm like, how in the hell are you doing it? Excuse my language, but like, girl, I'm impressed. So uh, as we have all these hats that we're wearing, whatever your life is, you've got all these different hats that you're wearing. What a great way to have five morning rituals to really win the day. So let's jump right into it, Shani. So tell us what the first one is. So, oh, um, especially during, um, I'm not going to stay on the topic long, but so, especially during the pandemic, a lot of my coaching clients, they had to work from home and their kids, they basically had to teach um, their kids why they was working from home and they basically wake up and they just, they're doing this, they're doing that, their mind's all over the place. And the main thing is get in your mind at a state of calmness when you wake up. Not going to your email, thinking about, oh my goodness, I need to get this done, I need to get that done. I know if you have kids, it's a different story, but waking up a little bit before them. And so by setting these, these rituals up, the main thing is first making your bed in the morning. Um, if you can make your bed and your spouse is not in the bed, that is a, a huge accomplishment. I know it's very small, but it sets you up for other accomplishments throughout the day. Um, and finding a space, whether it's on your bed after you make that bed or um, going into the living room, finding that, that space, the second thing would be meditating. Um, a lot of times when we wake up, we're just like, okay, you're on the go, go, go mode. 
And I, and I understand that. I know a lot of you women are just like, you guys are killing it with your work, um, you know, trying to make sure you make breakfast for your kids and all of that. But the main thing is making sure you have self-care for yourself. And this doesn't, these, I just want to let you know, these five rituals is not something that it needs to be a chore. Okay. Don't look at these as a chore. Look at this as I need to take care of me first. And then I can fill up everyone else's cup, work, um, your kids, tending to your husband. First, focus on you. And so the second thing would be, the first thing is making your bed. Second thing is meditating. And um, whether you're familiar with meditating, not familiar with it, don't think too much into it. They have guided meditation. I would highly recommend Tony Robbins guided meditation because it's only 10 minutes. It's only 10 minutes. It allows you to focus, give you the calmness, give you the clarity that you need to make your day more intentional for the day. Um, so then the third thing would be listen wait, to- wait, wait. Before, before we go oh, to the third- sorry. I get I, excited. I, I, I know you're so excited. I want to go into this a little bit more because um, what you said there was so important. Women, we love to give. It, especially a lot of us, we feel purposeful when we give to others. And so I think it is hard when you think about giving to yourself. A lot of women get stuck in that. And we hear it so often. Yes, put yourself first, put yourself first. But this really, uh, this really connected with me when I heard this phrase. And it is exactly what you just said. Don't give from your leaking bucket give yeah. from the overflow of your bucket. And I really liked that version. It means don't, it doesn't mean stop giving to other people. Yes. Give to other people. Keep feeling that, that uh, purposeful when you're giving away, but, but don't let it be from sucking out of you. Like, you know, like pouring the, from the, the holes out of you, let it be that overflow that you are so on top of your game that you have so much to give. It's just a whole different analogy that Shanice is talking about there. So keep that in mind. It's not about never giving to other people. It is, but I'll hold it. You're going to be so much more successful giving to your business, your kids, your husband, all your family, when you're giving from a happier you. And yes, and also it allows you, it prevents burnout, burnout, because a lot of us go through that. This is a very serious thing. I went through it a few times while I was trying to do two things at once. And although I absolutely love um, given um, to my corporate job and given to my clients and stuff like that. If I didn't give to myself first and made me priority, I wasn't able to be the best coach I could be to guide these women so they can be their best selves. So, or whether it's um, higher education, what I was working with before, or my nieces and nephews, I have 16 of them and I keep up with them all the time. It's a lot of Skype in, it's a lot of Zoom calls and if I'm on the call, they can tell something's wrong. So the main thing is just looking at it, like Danita said, looking at it as a way to um, not selfishness. This is something that is good for you and you'll be able to pour into others more in a, in a more meaningful way. Um, yeah. Let's go back. Yeah, I like that. Um, Hopefully that connects with you listeners that are on today. And if you have any questions, obviously at the end of this, I'll be able to share um, Shanice's and my information so that you can uh, send us a question right after this. We, we are here to help women. The next thing you talked about was meditation. And I think that word scares a lot of people because a lot of people have tried it. I think most people that are listening have tried it at least one time in their life. We're like, okay, stop my brain from thinking. And that is so difficult, as you know, Shanice. And so I want you to think how what really helped you through your journey. I want to see if there's like a special tip that allowed you to get over that hump of what was so difficult. And then I'll share mine, but you go first. So that's a really good question, Danita. I remember going into it and just thinking like, oh my goodness, I need to just be focused on one thing. That's the only way it's going to work because no one ever really told me how it's supposed to go. And we think that, you know, we see in the movies, you know, um, people are zinned out and we think that we're supposed to be this 
this person that's not thinking, but it's okay in meditation while you're meditating for you to think. That's totally fine. And so that's why I say that it's so important to, like, if you don't know the way to do it for yourself, go by the guided um, meditation. Uh, download that Calmness app and they'll tell you exactly how to do it. Where mine, basically where meditation came from for me is that my mind was always going. I have to meditate at night and I have to meditate early in the morning. Um, I wasn't really getting much sleep because I was thinking about, I was so excited about growing my business and doing this for my corporate job, helping this person out, like stretching in so many different areas. And I would have my phone right next to me and I would literally be on my phone taking notes about like what I need to do. And when I, had had my own coach they're just like Shanice you need to calm down it's okay to be excited about life <laughs> so um that's where my the meditation came for me and basically they got he basically guided me through the whole process of not thinking that it, meditation has to be perfect it has to be a certain type of way it's none of that it's basically you having um you having this calmness to you you know you thinking about um wherever your mind brings you is not a one particular thing or any of that so for the newbies the best way i can ever describe to you if you're going to try this which i highly highly recommend um especially early in the morning or at night um just try the calmness app because that would guide you through the whole thing or tony robbins 10 minute uh, guided meditation yeah i love it something that helped me because I definitely tried meditating and stopping the thoughts and it didn't work for me. And I became frustrated with it. It was just like, oh, I'm trying to stop these thoughts. And it just, it felt like I was trying to control this uh, shark in a tank, you know, it just, it just, it wasn't working for me. So what I've learned in some aspects that helped me, and I, I think that the, the meditate, the, um, guided meditation you're talking about extremely helpful, um, as it, it gets you a little bit more zeroed in on something. Um, and then you'll be able to find your own way. Now we're giving tips and advice here, but please just write down something that connects with you. This might be a handful of things that don't work, but find the things that do. And that's really what this is about is finding the things that do. And for me, what it came down to was connecting with words that are called easy world words. So we have two different options every day. We can live in difficult world or we can live in easy world. Difficult world is stress, anxiety. Uh, I need to do this. I'm not on top of it. Good days, bad days. Like you're just this like hot, cold, bipolar, up and down. Like there's just so much stress and we choose that. We can live in drama in difficult world or easy world. It's, uh, there's a few different words that I run through that, um, that I've learned, or you can pick your own words. So mine are breathing, connected, whole, embrace, love, thriving, basic trust, easy world. And I read through those pretty quick. So if you need to rewind it, write those down. And what I do is I not only think those out loud or think them, but I say them and then I feel them. And that allows me to connect to those words, which to me brings me back down to calmness and easy world. So if it's the app that she's talking about called Calm App, if it's Tony Robbins uh, meditation, or if it's just simple words that for me, I can do that really quick because I have those words memorized. Um, I've had people actually print out those words and hang them on their wall and they go through that in the morning. Whatever way that we're telling you right now that you're connecting with, write that down so you can find that calmness because it is important. Your subconscious is running the show. And if your subconscious is constantly on repeat with the negative things, you're only gonna get a negative outcome. So it is important to find yourself balanced to become, so you become very discerned and deciphered in your day so you can bring only the best to you. All right, Shanice, let's go to number three. That's good. That's good, Danita. Um, I definitely need to get those words because I would like to try those out. Um, <laughs> uh, the third one would be listen to um, listen or read something positive, like some inspiring material. This is not something that you have to draw out, but say if you um, are focusing on, um, I don't know, building a business or how to become more focused or um, getting clarity or um, how to have a well-balanced day, 
pick the people that, and I can name a few, if this resonates with you, you can always look them up. Jay Shetty, Brandon Bouchard, Maria Forleo, um, Michelle Obama, pick a material, inspiring material that works for you and listen to, you know, listen to whatever um, topic that resonates with you that you want to work on throughout that week, throughout that month, whatever goal that is for you. Um, it has inspired me a lot. Um, today, I listened to Marie Forleo and Mel Robbins, and they talk about um, the five, um, basically the five habits. And it was just, it, and it was right on point for me. And so I tell people, I can't tell them what will inspire you, but it definitely gives you, expands your knowledge. It helps stay, keeps you inspired and motivated. And um, you just have to find someone that suits you. So whatever that may be for you. I like that. And, you know, I think we can get so stuck on television shows or the latest TV series or social media or TikTok. I think we can get really lose a lot of time in our day with those things. However, we can actually find those things to be very productive as well if we choose the right ones. You mentioned Jay Shetty and a few of those other ones. They have social media in which if you follow them, you're going to get a really great content coming out of it. So I've actually rewired my social media that instead of just like hot girls and fit bodies and like luxurious traveling, <laughs> I've ended up turning it into what you're saying right now, which is the learning, the education, the business, the growing, the, the mindset, the, the rewiring of the neural the neuro network, you know, and really being able to, to start learning through that way as well. So whatever way that you choose, it is important what you're saying right there, that, that, le that reading and learning so that we can continue to keep growing. And sometimes we forget and we just get, I think, so... Uh, so exhausted through our day. So and to bring on more information just feels even more exhausting, especially obviously everyone seems to be working, right? Everyone has a really busy day. So by the time you get home, you're just like, I just want to be a vegetable. But it is, um, so I agree with you on that. What, what would you, what, how would you expand off of that if uh, people are at the end of their day and they're just like, oh, the last thing I want to do is read and learn? See, that's why it's really, really important to do this in the morning. These are morning, because this is going to get you all, um, what is it called? Just, it's going to get your juices flowing. Um, it's going to put you in a good mood. Um, so that's why I say, if you can read for just 15 minutes, just one chapter, one chapter, or even have your audio on, audio book on and you while you're doing your little exercise your 10 or 15 minute exercise you can basically listen to your audio and kill two birds with one stone and that's it so the main focus is doing these things in the morning so at night you already know you're going to be exhausted you know you're going to want to connect with the family the last thing you want to do is read a book some people do that but it depends on what your schedule looks like for you so killing these things this does not have to, this, these five rituals, whatever you take from it um, that resonates with you, that's great. If you take all five of them, I just want to let you know, this does not have to be a two hour thing, nor does it have to be an hour, you know, spending a half an hour, getting up a little bit early to do these. I swear to you, this is only going to make your, your day even better. All right, let's, uh, let's hit the next one. So what would number four be? I would have to say journaling. So you could do this in the morning or you can do this at night. Um, I choose to do it in the morning because a lot of times throughout the day, you have things that come up, unexpected things that come up, um, whether it's your mom giving you some bad news or, you know, you have a friend on the phone that something happened to them and they're just feeling some type of way and then they put their energy on you. We can't predict other people's um, move their energy or any of that. We can pick, we can kind of predict ourselves. And so what we can do during this time is what, when you journal for like at least five minutes, I do a gratitude journal. Um, I have to dump all my emotions on there. Like, what am I grateful for? Because when these things happen during the day, these bad things, or I can't say bad things, but unexpected mood busters, um, that's what I call them. 
I look back to, I think about what I journaled in the morning, what I'm grateful for, my health, my mom's health. You know, she just went through breast cancer. So just giving so much thanks every single day that she's healthy, my family's healthy. Um, I have a roof over my head. I, you know, have my nieces and nephews to inspire, certain things like that, just whatever it may be for you. Um, I also have an app, just in case you guys, just in case you don't know what to journal about, maybe it's not gratitude, maybe it's um, just dumping your, uh, dumping like how you feel about your day, your month, your week, whatever it may do, be, it also reduces your stress level. Um, and it basically improves your immune system because when your stress levels go down, your immune system it, uh, functions better. So just being able to journal for five minutes, not an hour, not 20 minutes, just five minutes. What are you grateful for? Write those things down or um, whatever it is that will resonate with you. We hear gratitude all the time, right? That's just something that comes up. But I think to go even deeper as far as what gratitude actually does to the mindset and what it can do, if you've ever heard of the secret by how you live your life and what comes back as an attraction in your life, if you want to attract good things, gratitude is going to be the number one thing. And here's why. There's two states that you can live in. I mentioned it earlier, difficult world or easy world. In difficult world, you're constantly living in lack. You're living in drama. You're living in stress. You're living in no gratitude. There's just, you're constantly thinking about the things that you're missing in your life. What this does is it, it puts you in a fear emotion. And in this fear emotion, you're actually sending out a vibration. So even though we can't see this vibration, just like we can't see microwave, microwaves, we know that they're there. There's something that's heating your food. It's the microwaves. So just as we're sending this vibration out, people can feel that. People can feel if you're living your life in lack and you're in self-pity and you're, you're in depression and you're negative all the time, that actually the waves that they've been able to measure is not aligned with our human DNA. And so you're missing who you really are when you're in difficult world. But if you're living in easy world, you're aligned with gratitude. You're aligned with the love vibration. That's the emotion you're feeling is love when you're in gratitude. And they've been able to measure those and they align with the human DNA. What that means is you are connected with who you truly are and the vibration that you're sending out to people around you, you're able to then attract more of that into your life. And I didn't know that until, you know, I'm in my thirties now, <laughs> but I heard all the time in my twenties, like, oh, be grateful. Shanice is doing something so powerful. We look at a, a beautiful, strong, successful woman. And do you think that's by accident? Do you think that's just by mistake? Do you think that's luck? Absolutely not. Luck is the residue of design. So what that means is she is con continuously designing her day to put herself in a vibration so she can, continues to attract amazing abundance into her life. And so we hear gratitude, but let's not take it for granted. Let's really think about the bigger picture of what it's doing and know the power of what gratitude can really bring back to us. I know that can be even selfish to think that, but hey, let's be selfish. Be in gratitude so you can be more selfish to get more things in your life. That's really it. Danita, that's so good. That's even deeper. That is so good. I love it. I love it. I like to get deeper because otherwise I feel like when you hear the surface stuff, you're like, oh, a reminder, I should do that, right? But yeah. let's, let's not have just a reminder but let's have the facts. Prove it to me yep. why I should be doing this so that I know I'll be getting something later in my life because of this. Exactly. And one of the things I have to say, Danita, for the most part, I'm, I'm in a good mood for the most part every single day. And sometimes I am, um, what is that word? Um, I'm an empath. So I would take on so many people's, like if something's happening to them, because I feel like I care so much and they're telling me about like their day and how their life is going. And it's this, all this bad stuff. I'm like, oh my goodness. I feel like they just like basically drained my energy and they always be like, oh my goodness, I love being around you. And then I walk away and I feel like I have all their stuff 
on my shoulders. And so this was able, like, I'm not going to tell my friends not to uh, talk to me about their, you know, their struggles and stuff like that. But I did build boundaries. Like, okay, we can talk about this, but only for five minutes. And guess what? We have to come up with what you're going to do about it. Because for the most part, a lot of people want to complain, but not do anything about it. And so I, I t would tell them, look, I love you guys so much, but in order for me to serve my clients, and that's my priority, um, or and serve myself, I only can give you guys five minutes to complain. And then we, the next, basically the rest of the conversation is about what we're going to do to make things better. Um, so I, I just love that just made me think of those things and, oh, I just love that. I love that. And that just goes to my gratitude journal. I'm just like, God, thank you so much for allowing me to just feel good often and create these boundaries. So people won't, you know, take a lot of my good energy away. And I say this to all of you women and every, just basically everyone create boundaries for yourself because the more you create boundaries for yourself, the more people will respect you. And not only that, they're going to, they're going to level up and make sure that um, they're not putting all their drama on you because you're not their therapist. Hundred percent, hundred and ten percent. Shanice, you nailed it. It, it is boundaries. And I think most empathic people don't have bound. Most of us don't even know what boundaries are when we're, you know, growing up in our teens and in our twenties. And it isn't until you learn boundaries that your whole life is going to start to shift. And one thing that really has been even more deeper as far as boundaries have been going, you know, we get girlfriends that love to talk and love to complain and love to vent and whatever. And as women, we love to talk, right? I mean, Hey, we're talking right now. Right. But more than ever, and this was something that got brought up. I remember I was kind of talking shit behind one of my friend's backs, right? Excuse my language. I'm really swearing a lot today. I'm being a sailor. But my boyfriend goes, do you care about this friend? And I said, yeah, I care about her. And he goes, well, then why are you saying this stuff behind her back? Why wouldn't you tell her in person? And I go, I don't know. It's a little bit uncomfortable. And I don't know if she's really ready to hear it. And uh, it's a little, it's, I would feel like, you know, uncomfortable to bring this because my personality is I just want everybody to like me and I don't want anyone to hate me. Well, he goes, if you want people in your life to do this for you, then why wouldn't you do it for them? Which is basically make each other and help each other grow. And I said, Ooh, that really hit me. So I catch myself if I'm ever saying something now, I actually go to my friend and I go, and this is, a, this is how I paraphrase it. So you can take exactly what I'm doing. Anybody that's listening on the call, this is how I do it to now change all of my friendship and all my relationships. I start off by saying, I care about the long term of our friendship enough that it makes me really uncomfortable to talk about this right now. What it is, is I, I feel that you could be better at this or that you could do this different or whatever it is. But I have those really difficult conversations with my friends now and the respect that I have been able to get and the appreciation they say of thank you and the depth of my relationships have been so much more powerful. And I feel like I'm really stepping into my own of really empowering women around me, not only my friendship, but my family and also my community as far as business goes is I don't just let women uh, go through their day without me telling them, Hey, you know what? Check in with yourself. And so I catch them on their shit. So if I see a woman talking about their limiting beliefs and they're saying, Oh, I had such a bad day. Actually, no, I'm going to catch you on your stuff right now. What you think is going to continue to per per perpetuate. So if you're saying, yes, I'm having a bad day. You're right. It's going to be a bad day. So it's important that the words that are coming out of the people in our uh, coming out of their mouth, that we're catching them on their stuff and let them know, Hey, I care about as you're as a friend. I'm not going to let you. Yeah, it's important to vent, but I'm also going to let you see what's happening in your subconscious mind. So you can be consciously aware of it and start changing it. So you can level up with me. I don't want to level up without you and I'm going to build you up, but I'm going to show you what's behind the blind spots that you don't see. I agree a hundred percent with that. Everyone in my circle. And that's what I'm grateful for. That's actually was what I, what my vision board looked like, just a bunch of like-minded individuals that we only uplift each other and we are straightforward. Like I was all, I have always been a very blunt person, 
Um, and sometimes it got me in trouble, but now I know how to deliver it in a way that now people are able to receive it. And I didn't, being blunt, you don't have to be cruel or any of that, but I didn't know it was coming out. I was just like, it was in my head and I need to get it out there and I need to tell my friends because in order for me to feel good, I'm like, I want you to feel good. I want you to correct your things. And I also want you to call me out on my stuff too, because I am not perfect. So I have a little bit of people that call me out on my things in California here. I love it. But the people that really call me out is the people from the East Coast. You know, it's a, I, I don't want to go into a rabbit hole about that, but it's a, it's a different mentality. So anyone that can call me out on my uh, on my on what I'm doing, I respect so much more, you know, because I just want to grow. And if people are not letting me know what I need to do to grow, or I'm not letting my friends know, and I can deliver it in a, a really better in a better way, so they can receive it, then why are we even friends? How, wh how are we going to lift each other up? How are we going to grow together? And so when I told my friends about the boundaries that I have with them, they were able to receive it and they just, they came back even stronger. So they'll be like, look, we're going to talk about this. They're just like, or I'll call them and then they'll text me like, Shanice, I don't want to put my bad energy out on you right now. So I'm going to give you a call back later. I'm just like, did I create that? <laughs> Girl, you did. You did. And that is so powerful. So those that are listening on the call, if you are struggling with finding those boundaries and really learning how to deliver, whether you're one that shies away from confrontation or one that's really blunt, learn that it's so important and so valuable for those relationships around you to keep leveling each other up. So Shanice, you and I, girl, let's keep leveling each other up. Let's do this. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you your flaws. You tell me mine, girl. Let's do it. I would love this. I would, I'm definitely, that's why I'm, I feel like we stayed connected, even though um, time goes by where we don't talk at all, but somehow we always stay connected. I remember when I first met you, I'm just like, this woman knows where she's going. She's very strong. I can tell that she called people on her crap, on their crap. I just, I felt that energy. I felt more then ever I felt your energy and that's what I go on. I go on people's energy. If their energy makes me feel good at first and they're in a good place in their lives, I connect with those people. Not saying that I don't connect with the other people, but it, our energies might cross path maybe in the future, you know? So I definitely want to stay connected with you, Danita. I'm just super happy to be on this and be able to connect with different women so we can just empower each other to level up every step of the way. That's what it's about. That's really what it comes down to. It's what it's about. Awesome. I love it. That's great. And I feel the same way about you. I mean, there's always been something that ties us together and it's, it's empowering. I love it. So yeah, let's get to the last one. Whew, that was a, that was a good one. We went on a tangent. That's fun. I love tangents. Um, the last one, what was you say is the fifth one? Ooh, exercise. Um, okay. So for all the busy moms out there, busy professionals, busy whoever, like if you cannot get an hour in the gym in the morning time, that's totally fine. It's, if the evening workouts work for you, that's fine. But move your body in some type of way in the morning. And it takes literally 15 to 20 minutes to do that. You can stretch. You can actually, I bought my booty band because here we go here. <laughs> I'm at the, right now, and I'm at one of the workspaces, so I'm going to be changing, and also I'm um, doing little workouts with some people here, but long story short, you can get in a workout within 15 to 20 minutes. It doesn't have to be this crazy, long, gated thing. Just move your body. It's going to help your energy. The main thing is having the most energy walking into the office, and this would this is actually what inspired me be, to become a coach i became addicted to working out because when i went into work and to my corporate job it was like um at first i started off as a, in sales and my manager would always say he's just like honestly shanice i don't know what are you on do you have coffee i don't know what you're on but you're always in a good mood you're always killing it you're always connecting with people and he's like it's six o'clock in the morning you're all excited and it's because i had an hour at the gym before i came in and so that was like 
my, um, what do they call like my medicine? Like that was like my coffee. That was my energy boost. And I always felt so great even throughout the whole day. So just like I said, it doesn't have to be an hour, get in a workout, move your body, stretch, do whatever you need to do. Um, I swear you're going to have the best energy ever. Yeah. Especially if you're sitting down, I have to say, if you sit, I, this is one thing I did learn every 50 minutes, get up. I even have a little timer on my phone or I bring my little block, depending on where I'm at every 15 minutes, I'm stretching, I'm moving. And then I'm back at my desk because it's not good for our, our, for our body to be still for that long. We, as human beings, we're not supposed to really be behind a computer. Let me just say that for hours at a time without taking a break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what the thing is, is those that are listening right now, don't just do it for your body's goals for that next event, like that Halloween party or whatever party's coming up next. Do it for your 80 year old self. Because remember that motion is lotion for your body. Don't just do it for your muscles, but do it for the ligaments and the tendons and the joints. Like you really want to think about a bigger picture overall. Sometimes we get stuck in that like short term gratification of like, oh, I want my body to look like this. But if you really start to expand your goals out a little bit more, that five, 10, 15 minute workout, I promise you, you're gonna be so grateful in the long run that you took that time. And again, it does not have to be an hour. It was built off of an hour because people as a personal trainer built that time so that they could get a set time to get paid. It does not have to be an hour. If anything, that's overkill. And I have learned more than ever that your workout is your workout. Make it the time that you can do it. I know moms literally will just do a workout while their baby's sleeping. I don't care how long that is. I don't care what you did, but you did something. And that consistency is where you're going to hit the goals. It's not about the workout. It's really the consistency. And so you have to ask yourself right now, if your mind is telling you negative thoughts and being like, oh, I can't do that. Or, oh, she said 15 minutes. Oh, I've got all these other responsibilities. If your mind is saying those negative thoughts right now, check in with yourself and find out what your self-sabotage loop is. And that's one thing I've been really specializing with women is there's this loop that you can get trapped in. And no matter what we said today, if you're finding yourself naturally going against what we're saying and being like, no, I wanna stay in this self-pity loop, check in with yourself. And if you want to join the booty bands and barbells mindset masterclass, where we show you what that loop is, because you're never going to change that loop until you fully become aware of it. Your subconscious is running the show and it will completely sabotage anything that's going on as far as success in your life until you finally become aware of the loop and you learn to transform it into a self-love loop instead. And it's been so transformational because I see women that are 20 years stuck in a loop, 20 years longer, stuck in a loop that they are just constantly living life in a negative repeat of, I don't have this and I don't have that much time and da, 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 like whatever their excuses are. And it isn't until they become aware of it and then they finally go, oh my gosh, this has been running my show. And when they step out of that and go into an empowered belief instead, their whole world transforms. So what Shanice just said, Check in with yourself. If you felt like motivated and, and, and excited and ready to go do your workout, great. But if you're not, check in with yourself even deeper because that mindset is so important. If it's negative, it's going to give you a negative outcome. So make sure you're positive so you can start getting those positive outcomes. Love it, Shanice. This is very, very, uh, it's basic, but it's what we need to get back to. And I think it's great reminders for people to, for women especially, to to get reminded of these things. And I believe it really helped me of thinking of a few things that I need to do. And I know that it's helping for those that are the listeners to remind themselves to do it too. So thank you again for bringing this to our ears today. We want to um, be motivated and follow you. You're such an inspiring, impactful woman. I follow you on Instagram, but what are some other areas that if it's on Instagram, where's your favorite platform for people to follow you? I would have to say either I'm on LinkedIn or Instagram. So those in my blog, I do my, the monthly um, personal and professional development blog posts, but you can mainly find me on Instagram and LinkedIn. So I will definitely give you that information. And um, just to piggyback off of what you said, Danita, this is, you know, fitness is not just about 
um, having that six pack, not about just like get into that dress. This is a lifestyle. This is only going to help you to become a better person, not only for yourself, but for your whole family. It's going to impact them as well. So um, in this all about the mindset. So I'm very excited that I got a chance to be on this podcast and to connect with you, Danita, because you are so amazing and you're impacting so many people's lives on so many levels. So please continue to do that. And we have to obviously stay connected. Of course, of course, you know it, you know it. So thank you again. I will make sure that the links that you give me, I'll put it in the comments down below so that it'll make it easy for those that want to scroll down and follow you. And those that are listening, uh, make sure to write these down. Um, they're basic but strong tips. I've got a few things that I'm going to write down right after this so I can follow those. And just find our abundance and success of naturally who we are. That is our God-given right to be successful and abundant and beautiful and energetic. That is what we are deserving. And we can get that. Let our minds allow ourselves to say, yes, I deserve that. And I can and I will. That is going to be one of the strongest things. So thank you again, Shanice. And um, I, I would love to do another podcast. So if you have some other fun topics, I'd love to bring you back on so we can keep connecting. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Awesome. Bye. Okay. Awesome. Wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. So go ahead and write us a review, and we will pick weekly giveaways on our unique booty bands to give away. So thank you guys so much for listening. It was awesome having you on. I'm very excited to leave your review. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, where you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.